Hey everybody, it's Mary at Yard Art R Us, and I am coming on showing you guys how I'm making a uh, Christmas tree. Now this is one of those that we do sell the template for or the blank, and we actually did this last year, but I'm going to be showing you because we got some folks that didn't do the tree last year, and we have some new folks. And I'm going to show you if you decide you want to do something, th this tree or anything about this size, could be the tree, could be something else. If you're not used to painting something this size, let me show you a couple of things that you can do to make your life easier. First of all, instead of just using a brush, I use a roller. It's any, it's a roller that you can get like at any of the box stores. And the reason I'm gonna use this roller, as you can see what I'm doing, this is going a lot faster than if I was just using a brush. Now, the way I have the camera mounted today, I am not gonna be able to read your comments as I'm going because I'm giving you all this view and, um, I wanted you to be able to kind of see. I'll go back later and answer any questions you have, but I wanted you to get a good view of what I do and how I do it and how if you decide to do this tree or any piece of yard art that's just bigger than something little, you might want to do this. Now, I will put, because I've got such a big area, I'll use this mop brush. i got some trash right there. And this roller is not going to reach up in the recesses right here. So I will use that mop brush to kind of go in those uh, inside corners, if you will. And then I grab this and I paint some more. And so of course you always want to paint your edges. That's very, very important. Not just for aesthetics, but just to kind of help keep moisture out and longevity. So I'm going to roller this all the way around. And I have this on right now. I always use one of these uh, little lazy scissors. And that's just something, you can get the Lazy Susan metal piece at, at any store, like a Home Depot or something like that. So I'm going to roll this around, and this is the actual sample that I'm painting that you're actually, if you follow us um, and you uh, watch our sneak peek on Tuesday, we're going to be doing a sneak peek, uh, and it's going to be different than any other sneak peek we've ever done before, so it's going to be a little different. But this is the sample for that sneak peek. And again, I'm taking this and I'm going in these recesses right here with that brush. I am going to do this, and you can tell I'm not going to be on this live very long because this is not going to take me very long, right? I'll come back on again when I get ready to base coat the colors of the bulbs. But I will put two coats of green on here, y'all. Now, I'm not going to, I probably won't make the video just of the second coat of the green because that's there's no point really and I'm just going in here in these recesses and whatever my little round roller didn't get to I'm doing it now by my mop brush okay so I think I have all my interior or inside corners done let me go up here just like that now notice I take this and I go this way right and then sometimes I go this way. So I go back and forth, left and right, top to bottom. Okay? That way I'm gonna make sure I get a lot of paint everywhere I want. Now, I actually have a, a like a little black bottom on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and paint it green for right now. And you'll see later in another video what I do to make that different. So I'm going oh, all kinds of places with this roller. But you can tell the roller is just something that makes your life go, your painting, your base coating go faster. All right. So I'm going to put, and also I keep my things in a Ziploc bag. If you do this, use the freezer, not the regular bags, because the freezer bags are more heavy duty and they're going to hold that uh, moisture in there a lot longer than the other bags would. So I use a freezer bag. And I'm just about finished, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to do to the star. I'm almost finished with the green, and you can tell in just a little bit of time, you can get something base coated very quickly. And think about if you used a brush, even a mop brush, which I, those of you that have been with us for a while, you know we, we're big fans, Ashton and I are big fans of the mop brush. Okay, so I think I've got enough paint on there for my first coat. Of course, it's gonna take another coat but we need to let that one dry. 
And now, while I have this out, I'm going to grab another mop brush and I'm going to grab some white paint because I want my star to be yellow. And because I want my star to be yellow, I'm going to start with white. And I'm going to put a, a pretty generous amount of white paint under that yellow. I'm going to go back and forth and kind of load that brush up. I'm going to hit the sides first because that's what I do, like so. Like that. And I am in South Texas and it's kind of muggy here today, but I'm inside my art room. And uh, I'm going to let this coat dry for probably about an hour. And I'm going to come out here and put some more green on top of that first coat. Now, obviously, this white coat, next time it gets painted, will be with yellow paint. But I'm putting a white underneath there because I know what yellow is like. It's very transparent. And if you want a really pretty bright yellow, which I like that, then you really need some white underneath it. And I have too much paint on here, so I'm just going to pull this off over here like that. There we go. And here, in just a second, I'm going to be done, y'all. So I will be coming on throughout the rest of the day tomorrow. Just kind of giving those of you uh, who might be thinking about painting any kind of yard art, whether it's this tree or anything large, some tips and tricks that you might want to do to help yourself make it go by quicker. Okay? But we will see you guys soon. And uh, Ashley's going to be doing tomorrow, I think, the interchangeable truck. And maybe Friday the snail. Something like that. But I'll be back on after a while when I'm ready to base coat my colors. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments and I will go back and answer them. Thank you. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Mary at Yard Under Us. <coughs> I hope you guys are doing well. I am uh, coming to you from a little bit different angle today. I had a kind of a crazy day and I decided, you know what? I've done everything today that I really didn't want to do, which is like paperwork, running errands, making decisions, paying bills, you know, all the things that adults have to do. And I didn't get to paint it all today. And so I decided, you know what? I am going to um, do a little bit of fun stuff. So I'm gonna get my comments pulled up here. I'm gonna show you guys how to paint a Christmas tree should you decide to do this one. And um, I'm going to get over here and see if I can find my comments. Let's go here. Yeah, I think I can do it. Hey, Belinda, how are you? I am going to show you how to do a Christmas tree because this is actually a sample I'm going to paint for our sneak peek. And I thought, you know what? Really? <clears throat> Painting is like my saving grace. And today has been a hard day. Just, I don't know, y'all. A lot of BS going on. And all the whole supply chain with COVID is just very stressful at the shop. One problem after another. And I thought, you know what? I could sit and watch TV, which I'm not a bunch of a TV watcher. Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm so glad y'all are here. And this is unscheduled, unplanned, but sometimes those are the best ones. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to, um, I came on a little earlier today and I base coated this Christmas tree with a roller. If you didn't get to see that, it wasn't, you know, a big, long tutorial. But um, I use this roller that you can get at any store, you, you know, at Home Depot. And I rollered this twice in green. That's what I did. And under my yellow star, I put white paint, let it dry, and then I did yellow paint. Now, the reason I did white paint here under uh, the yellow is if you want your yellow to pop, you got to go white first. Uh, so that's what I did. I'm watering this down. I'm fixing to show you what I'm going to do in terms of some brush strokes. Now, for those of you that like to paint, just maybe you're painting for yourself, uh, you can't go wrong with a Christmas tree. And some of you who may be thinking about, you know, selling some of your stuff, you cannot go wrong with a Christmas tree when we're talking about Christmas. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> and um, Ashley and I both are kind of fans of the Cotman brushes. And so these are Cotman 14s, and they're just round brushes. And you can kind of see, and the reason I love the Cotmans is they tend to have a softer bristle. 
And so those bristles, it's kind of like your hair on your head. You know, when, you're, when you've when you got it going and, you, and it moves with the wind, it feels more natural. These things, they are, Cotman is more expensive, but you know, it's kind of one of those that, <clears throat> I don't know this thing, I don't know how much this one costs, but I haven't used it much and uh, I'll keep stuff like this forever. Hey, Con Con, how are you? So I'm going to just kind of start and basically I don't do anything with my trees as far as, I just kind of sit here and do just like what you see me doing. I don't try to do anything perfect. I don't have a pattern as far as, oh my goodness, you know, I've got to make sure I have a brush stroke here. I better have a brush stroke there. That's not what I do. I just kind of dip the paint in here and pull that up. And notice I'm doing all my stroking before I put the uh, paint on my, uh, on my bulbs. And the reason I'm doing that is you want to make sure those bulbs are on top of your uh, tree branches here. This is kind of like my Christmas tree branches, if you will. You want to put some brush strokes on here, but you don't really want to overdo it either. So I've, I've overdone it before, so it's very possible. And to me, if you overdo it and you get too many strokes on here, this whole thing just starts looking like nothing but green st strokes. So notice I'm just kind of I'll put my brush down and I'll and I'll and I'll make the pressure go down and then I'll pull up. So this part is the wide stroke. Right over here is the thin stroke because that's where I'm pulling up. And you can look at this and kind of see that the tip of this, let me put it right here. And this is a round brush, but it has kind of like a tip on it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over a little bit and I'm gonna just kind of keep doing those brush strokes. And the cool thing about this, these brush strokes will not take very long to dry. Most of them will dry fairly quickly. And notice that my brush strokes, they're not perfect. They don't all have the same width. Some of them are fatter, some of them are wider, some of them are shorter, some of them are skinnier. And I kind of think that that's, uh, that's just my style. That's the way I've always done it. Um, but you cannot go wrong with a Christmas tree. Just, you just, there's just no wrong in that. And I'm just gonna kinda come down here and I might put a few more strokes here. So, that's pretty much it as far as my um, green brush strokes. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna bend down, I've got my water right here. I'm gonna bend down a little bit and I'm going to clean this brush out. That's what I'm doing right now, I'm just bending over and cleaning it out. Hey Debbie, how are you? I said, you know what, the best part of my day is in here painting and talking to y'all because today's just been a yucky day. It's been full of doing all kinds of things I didn't want to do. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do what I want to do, which is paint. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to water this down and I'm going to come back with my same brush. Now, because I want white highlights, I'm going to back off this brush. What does that mean? I'm not going to put as much paint on the brush and I'm not going to put as much pressure on the board. So if you're a person that you don't trust yourself to not do that, because I don't want my white strokes as big as my green ones. I know I can make that work with this same size brush that I have right here. But let's say you're a person, you don't, you're, you're like starting out, you're not sure that you can do that. You can always get a smaller brush. Let's see, this is a 10, y'all. So I might go with a smaller brush because I don't want my white strokes as big as those green. But if you don't put some white in there, to me, you're missing out. You gotta have some white in there, I think. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda come in here. And this will probably be the tutorial. I probably won't do a tutorial in, in July on this just because this will be the tutorial. And plus I did one last year, so I think we've got plenty as far as that goes. Notice I'm not trying to make those streaks or those brush strokes perfect, am I? Not trying to be, you know, like, oh my gosh, they all got to look the same. No, this is a Christmas tree. And I'm not even paying attention at all to the circles on here, am I? That's because I know I'm going to come cover that up, y'all. So I'm just going to kind of do this. Kind of come over here. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just looking to see, do I have enough white that I think it's gonna look good. Yeah, gotta add a little bit of uh, highlights in here. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to take this same brush. I'm not going to wash it out. I'm going to use a little black. Now, you're going to be careful with some black because you don't want too much, okay? And I'm going to deliberately put that black kind of in here where the green is, right? Just kind of where that green's at. I'm just going to kind of come over here and do it like this. And notice that you can tell I still have some white paint on here and I'm not worried about that. Again, I'm not trying to make my everything look perfect. Um, and when I painted, <clears throat> I have painted, y'all, in my career, when I tell you I have painted thousands of Christmas trees over the years, no kidding. And uh, Bruce, would, he would come in when I'm getting towards the end, because I typically do about 150 trees, maybe 200 trees a year. You do that many after a while, it just uh, kind of starts to get crazy. And he'll say, I can tell when you're getting to the end because you're getting more and more sloppy. <laughs> it's like, probably so, you know? So, I'm just kind of coming in here and putting some of that black wherever I see the green. I'm not putting all on. I'm not trying to cover up the green, but I'm kind of just kind of putting it right a little bit on top. And then we're going to come here. Something like that. You can always come back and add to that if you want to. Now I'm going to pick up a, uh, what do you call this? Mop brush. I can actually see comments in here. So that says, Connie says, I'm expecting to see Ellie Mae walk in the art room and start being bad any minute. Isn't that the truth? She's been bad all day, y'all. She's she just, oh Lord, y'all. She's been trying my patience today. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just making a, there's not a line. In fact, we actually sell this template. I think I put the template on today. So if you don't want to buy the blank, you can always make your own. And I'm just kind of putting that black paint down here on the bottom as my tree skirt, if you will. And, <clears throat> excuse me. I am going to come over here and do some uh, black paint on the edges. Just to match my pattern here. All right. Now, honestly, I'll come back with a little more black on my outline or with my script liner later. But as far as my brush strokes, I'm done with my brush strokes, y'all. And you can see that I haven't been on live too long and I'm done with all my brush strokes. Now, I actually had to print this out, y'all, because you would think as many Christmas trees as I've painted. I wouldn't have to look and see, remember what color of bulbs, but I had to, I, I can't remember. Hey, Victoria, how are you? And uh, so I had to print this out because I, you would think I would remember what colors these are. Now, the reason I've got to make sure my colors are good is because I ordered thousands of dollars of uh, C9 bulbs from a company out of Colorado. In fact, I ordered them back in February. <clears throat> they come across the pond, so to speak. And, um, so my order need you know, my my idea here needs to match what I know bulb what bulbs I have coming. Especially with the supply chain all jacked up right now. Um, I place my order early for Christmas bulbs and I go and look at a lot of things that I put lights in and I see I have two red, two orange, two yellow. Actually I have geez Louise, y'all. I don't got crazy with the red on this one. I have four red. One, two, three, four red, two orange two yellow, two blue. Now, let me say a couple of things. People might want to know, how do you decide what colors you're going to put on? This is just my personal preference. This is just me having sold it for so many years. People, in my opinion, especially if you're selling this, if you're just making it for you, no big deal, put what you want on there. But if you're trying to sell it, you really need bright and light. And so, that's probably why I have red on here because really Christmas green and red is your two main colors. But I'm going to have a yellow star and I'm going to have two of these and I'm going to have two orange and two yellow. I don't want real dark, dark colors. And that red is dark enough. So that was kind of my method behind trying to choose what colors do you want for your bulbs. Now, I know I've got two yellow bulbs. And so what I'm going to have to do because I've got two yellows, I'm gonna to have to do this. This yellow goes right here. 
I'm gonna put some white under this, and honestly, I don't know that this will dry tonight, so I'll probably have to come back on tomorrow, but I'll get as far as I can with all of this so y'all can just see. And um, I am putting the white under here. Now, you probably could get away without putting the white, but your yellow is not gonna look near as good. Again, I'm going for that bright, bright look. So if you'll put the, the white under here first, then your yellow is gonna look good. And that's what I did on my start. I did white and then I did yellow. Now I know, I'm gonna just rinse this out. I can get most of those colors to cover pretty good. The red, I, I might have to uh, put two coats on. Let me shake it up and see. Sometimes I can get enough red, I can get away with one coat. All right, I just shook that up. This is number 20 red. If you're not using our paint, that's fine. This is what I would just call a true Christmas Santa red. Basically, red, red, red is basically what it is. Because I'm going to use shading red after a while when this dries, I'm going to use some shading red. And so I want my shading red I know is really a dark red. And so I want a light red here. And I really have too much paint on there. So I'm gonna look, and this is one red, and then I'm looking at that photo to make sure I don't screw this up. That's another red. There's my reds. Okay, so I've got my reds. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I've said, you know, I was having not a good day, y'all. And I don't think it was any one thing. It's just, we've had a lot of, I've gone to the Xfinity store several times in the last week, trying to figure out why. I'm having such trouble hooking up out here, getting internet out here in my art room. They sold me a product that they swore up and down was all that. I went and bought it, came home, it didn't work, <clears throat> took it back. They said they even said after that, they said, well, maybe you should go to Best Buy. I thought that was funny. They're, re they're referring me to another company. And so I went to Best Buy and uh, I haven't also, I've got an adapter coming tomorrow. So we're gonna see. Right this very minute, I have pretty good reception, but you never know. And the, my art room, my studio here is kind of a dead area and I don't know why. And y'all, I pay a lot of money. It's not like I don't pay a lot of money every month for, uh, what do you call it, for um, internet. I pay a lot. I'm sure y'all feel the same way. Like my bill's almost $200. And I, but we have cable TV too. And my husband is old school and he likes the, sports channels and you know all that good stuff and he's not <clears throat> he does he's not a person that spends a lot of money so i don't feel like i can really get after him because he really likes to you know have those things so let's see mary did Lucy and mary did a video on that do you have a video on how to put the lights on i think i did a video last year on that but there it says i did and i probably did um and you know what i can always do another one and um but we have, um, like if you buy this blanket, it comes with the, the spool of lights and the C9 bulbs. And, um, and if not, you can always get your spool of lights like from a hardware store. I think there's, I think there's 11 in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's 10 bulbs in here, not 11. Uh, uh, excuse me, evidently, I don't know how to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, 10, I was thinking 11, what do I know y'all? All right, so I'm going to do orange. So I do mine in light orange right here. Oh, I shake up the bottle and make sure. And let's see, I'm gonna put the orange one. Seems like I did an orange one here. And that's another thing. I don't know if I'm gonna go by that picture or not, y'all. When you're doing this, Try to decide where you want to put your bulbs. The thing you try to do is notice on my reds, I spread them out, and on my yellows, I spread them out. So I only have two more colors left, which is gonna be the orange and the blue. So I've got two there, so obviously an orange and a blue over here, and then maybe an orange and a blue over here. So I could do an orange here and an orange, eh, no matter how I do it, two of them are gonna to be together. Oh, well, I probably have been doing this this way where I'll just do an orange right here and an orange right here. And then I'll separate the blues a little more. So you want to try to put your colors just kind of uh, where they're not next to each other. 
That's really all I try to do. And notice I have a lot of paint on here, don't I? I don't know if y'all can tell because of the camera view or not, but I have a lot of paint on here because I know I've got to put a lot of paint on here to cover the, uh, the green paint underneath there. So I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. Now, obviously, that's got to dry real good for me to put the yellow on there. I'm gonna bend down and I'm gonna clean out my brush and I'm gonna put my blue on. Some years, y'all, I just have it in me to do a lot of trees and other years I don't. I try to do a lot of them because Christmas trees is something you're gonna sell from the very beginning of the season to the very end. Literally, people will come in Christmas Eve and be looking for Christmas trees. I'm usually out by then, but they'll be looking for them. <clears throat> so I, my brush is still kind of wet, so I'm just gonna kind of pounce it a little bit up and down and get that, get that uh, blue paint in there. Now, what I'm gonna do And I'm going to let this dry as I work on the star. And what I might have to do is stop the video and come back on in about 30 minutes to let this dry. But I'll work on the star right now. Okay, so I've got all my bulbs. Of course, I'm going to put my yellow on there in a little bit. And I'm going to do my star. I've got my yellow. And y'all who've been following me for a while, you know that I always tend to do yellow and then shading yellow or red and shading red or blue and shading blue that's kind of the i guess you could say the method to my madness and um that's part of what we've worked all these years to perfect as far as the kind of color schemes and that takes a while to kind of figure all that out and a lot of it has been trial and error honestly but I'm going to do a little bit on this star so you guys can see kind of what it's going to end up being like. And really, I probably will come on in 30 minutes and finish this tree, and it, it'll be done. So there's the trees are not really hard, and they're pretty good as far as, this, as, far as sellers. They're good sellers. People usually always like a tree. Sometimes people will come to our shop and they'll say, okay, I've never done yard art before and I want to buy some, what should I buy? And here's my budget. And I always tell them, can't ever go wrong with the tree. Hey, Linda, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. I'm just kind of showing folks how to paint this Christmas tree. I actually did this last year and I did a live uh, tutorial on it last year. But I thought, let me go ahead and do another one this year because I'm going to be painting. This is a sample that I'm painting. We're going to be doing a, uh, for those of you that follow us, you may want to check us out Tuesday night. Ashley and I will be together doing a live sneak peek for all of our Christmas stuff. And the live is actually going to be done at our shop. She usually does it at her house, but we've got some things in mind that are going to be different. So it's going to be actually done at our shop. And so we are trying to get all of our samples painted. That's what I'm doing right now, painting a sample uh, for this for the live. Okay, so I've got that yellow there, and all I did was go around the perimeter of my star. And I still have paint on here, okay? And while I still have paint, what I'm going to do, and I'm not, you know, trying to be precise, I'm just going to go five times. Actually, six. Let's do six, okay? So there's my yellow, and that's all I really do to the star, except I will come in here and I'll outline it. Let me show you what that looks like. Now, because of the way I like to do my colors, I'm going to go with shading orange on my outline. I did shading yellow for my shading, and I'm going to do shading orange for my outline. And why did I pick that? Well, I picked that because I like these two colors together. Here's shading yellow. Here's shading orange. They're kind of the, they're kind of the same. They're not too far off from one another, but they are far enough apart that when you do this, and you um, outline it's going to look good. And this is a color scheme that I probably have used for 20 years on my, on my Christmas trees. Just what I've always done for a long time. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to hang on to the outside out here. Putting that shading orange on. 
something like that, okay? I'm not trying to cover up all my shading yellow, just some of it. And I'll come up under here like that, and then I'll come back up here, like so. And again, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll come back later with white in here. That's all I do. See how easy that is? Uh, how to put the, okay, thank you, Connie. She said she, should put, she showed us for the gingerbread one. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. If y'all hang out for just a second, I'm gonna get the hair dryer, and I think I can go ahead and finish this tree in just a few minutes. Let me get the hair dryer. what I would call bone dry. It just needs to be dry enough that I can get away with doing a little bit of shading. And I can answer any questions at this point if y'all have any. Let me know. I know that we have some people that are new and um, some people have been emailing me saying they're kind of lost. You know, where can they find stuff? So the academy is where you want to come just for people who, this is where we give the most content. Now, we give content in the other groups, but not like we do here. So, this is kind of that paid membership content Facebook group. We also have yardartacademy.com. That's our website that you can go to. And on that website, you're going to see all of our project videos plus all of our behind-the-scenes videos. Now, I'm going to put this... It's not going to be quite dry, but I'm going to push it anyway and make it happen real I think I can make it happen. Now, normally, if I wasn't doing a video, I would set this aside and let it grab more naturally. But, no time like the present, y'all. Okay, because this is not totally dry, we're going to get a little bit of a good look. What do I mean by a good look? I'll show you. So I'm going to pick up this brush that I used earlier. Let's see. All right, let me pull this one out. So this is that Cotman round brush that I used earlier to make the brush strokes on the tree, the green brush strokes. I'm going to use this same brush, y'all. It's kind of wet, but that's okay. And... Um, Let's put some yellow right here because I do have to do that. I probably won't get to do the yellow right now, but that's okay. I'll do all the other bulbs and you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and put this yellow on. So probably in the morning when I get up, I'll finish the yellow. That'll be all I have to finish. I can do all the rest of it for you and you'll be able to see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some shading red which is right here. I'm going to put some water in it. Now, if you're going to do this the way I do it, it is important that your shading colors for your Christmas tree bulbs be watered down. Okay? And I go for kind of like, I don't know, you might call it the sloppy look because I'm not, you'll see here in a minute, I just kind of slop this on. I don't, I don't think that's a very good scientific term, but... You get the idea. So I've got the red in here, right? And I'm going to dip my brush all the way down. I'm gonna hold this and I'm, I'm hitting it really hard, y'all. And then I'm gonna take a little bit off. And then I just come in here and I do this. That's it. I do not try to make it perfect. It doesn't look perfect. It's kind of sloppy, that's what I like. I've sold I don't know how many trees that have kind of that sloppy brushed on uh, look as far as the shading of your bulbs. Now, if you don't like that, then you can be more precise. You could always do, uh, you could always come around here and just hang on the outside and just shade the outside if that's what you like. There's absolutely no problem with that. This is my shading orange. That's what I do. So my bulbs on my Christmas trees are far, 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 far from perfect. I kind of go for the sloppy look. And I, I like that because I still get some of that, 
light color, but I get the dark color in there too. Now I'm gonna pick Brilliant Blue. Make sure I get the right one here, y'all. Lord, that thing up there is dried out, so let me try this, y'all. Let me put some Brilliant Blue in here. I'm gonna do Brilliant Blue on this medium. These two blues right here on the uh, base coat is the medium blue. I'm gonna do Brilliant Blue for my shading. But you have to put a lot of water in there. And you might take a look. I, I just now noticed in the video you can see how I have ever all of my paint organized. And I label it all because I have ladies who come in here and help me paint. And if I tell it, you know, I might be in the other room and I'll, they'll say, well, what color do I need? And I'll just say, oh, make sure you get that number 26 uh, shading pink. It's just kind of helpful. So take this. One, two, one, two. Nothing perfect about it. It's going to look a little sloppy. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the yellow bulb. It's going to be really sloppy. That's okay. I'm going to do it anyway, y'all. That one is dry out. Let's do this one. I'm going to put some, this is shading yellow that I have right here. what I would do with my black paint. Oh, that's brown. Let's see. Oh, that's a dark. I'm almost done here. Not quite. <clears throat> I still have a little bit of black outlining to do and a little bit of white highlights to do. Not a whole, whole lot, but a little. Okay, here's some black paint. Let's put more black paint in here. There we go. And I'm going to put Hey Kim, how are you? I'm having a hard time seeing some of the comments. Painting many trees. Did you paint many trees? Okay, yeah, it is that time of year. I tell you, people cannot resist Christmas trees. I don't, they just can't. Especially if you put, y'all, if you put glitter and lights on them. Cannot resist it. Of course, in the old days when I first started painting, I didn't glitter anything. And I didn't put lights in anything. And I learned over the years to do that. Okay. So I've got my script liner, and I do need to come in here and outline the outside of my bulbs like this. I'm not trying to cover up that red, but I'm just trying to create that outline. And I put a lot of paint on here. So one of the things about my style is that I just put a lot of paint on everything I do. Part of it is that it's outdoor and part of it is just the look I like. So I'm kind of coming on the outside of my tree and I might do a few more brush strokes in here and I'm just kind of hanging on the outside of this tree like that. That's what I'm doing. So on Tuesday night we'll be doing the sneak peek and we'll be over at the shop doing it. and. Um, I think you guys are going to like it because you're going to see some stuff, you, you know, we're going to do it in a way we've never done it before. I'll put it to you that way. And I think it's just good uh, as far as what the camera is going to see and what you guys will be able to tell about each piece. All right, so I am going to come out here on the outside and I am doing that. Okay. Hanging on the outside here, coming up. And then, of course, I'm going around my bulb. Got to put, that time I had to put quite a few strokes on there to get that CNC line to cover up. And sometimes you do. You have to put a few strokes more than normal to get that CNC line to cover. There we go. And I'll just kind of come in here and probably do a few more. Nothing too serious. And do this. I'm glad you're all hanging out with me. Because I was having a, a bad day. Not a bad day. That's not true. Just not kind of one of those days. But I'm already in a better mood out here for painting. Nothing has changed, y'all. Nothing, nothing has changed except my, my mood. Uh, four, but I added candy canes to mine. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Debbie says she loves the glitter. Yes, I do too, Debbie. 
I don't know if I've told y'all, but we started glittering because we had a, a lot of bad wood. And um, this was probably back in the early 90s. And uh, our wood was looking really rough on the face, which was kind of unusual, but everybody got a bad, they just were produced. And that's the other thing about wood or any sheet material. <clears throat> Every year's different. You just, you know, sometimes they give you really good stuff and sometimes they don't, especially when you go to those box stores. And we were having a lot of trouble and I was about to have a nervous breakdown because y'all had a lot of inventory and it was looking rough. And I just didn't think I could sell it. And so I was upset. Because I probably at the time had $10,000 of inventory and to me that was a lot of money. You know, because this was in the early 90s. And so Bruce says, hey, get in the truck. We're going to go to uh, Garden Ridge Pottery. Back then, that's what it was. I was like, what the heck are we going to get in the truck and go spend more money? We're throw, throwing good money after bad? He's like, no, 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 I have a plan. I think we can fix it. I was like, no, dude, I don't know about this. And uh, so he goes and gets glitter at Garden Ridge Pottery. And I still was kind of like, what are you doing? You know, notice I just take a white and I just kind of go on the top of every one of my, I'm trying to stay out of that black. And I just put a little bit of a white on the top. It's still really wet, so I'll probably come in here tomorrow and touch this white up, y'all. And I'll come in here and put a little bit more white like this. And so the idea is I have this brush stroke in white, but I also have this brush stroke in white. So all of my white brush strokes are not identical. Okay, that's what I like about it. Anyway, so he says, you know, we're going to go to Garden Ridge Pottery and buy glitter. And I'm like, we don't have any money to buy glitter. I've already spent all the money I have, you know, and all that kind of stuff. He's like, no, no, get in the car, get in the car. We're going, uh, get in the van, get in the van. So we go there and get glitter. And we come back, he's got all this glitter going everywhere. And he starts putting glitter on with polyurethane. And you know, it, was a, it was just a mess. And, uh, but we worked and worked and worked till we kind of got it to where we thought it looked good and was covering up a lot of boo-boos. And I remember we took it out to the shop and we got out of the truck and we were unloading the truck. It was a Saturday afternoon because that's the only time we could unload because we worked regular jobs. Everybody that was at the shop, all the customers that was at the shop came to the truck and bought it before I could get it out of the truck because they liked to do it. So, I guess the moral to that story is A, don't doubt Bruce when he comes up with a good idea. That's one moral. And B, when stuff messes up, you just have to, you, you just have to deal with it and you've got to find a way to make it work, y'all. You just have to. It's either that or sit down and cry. And sitting down and crying ain't going to help nothing. Believe me, if it would have, I would. And I did a solid glitter star. Oh, I bet that's pretty, Kim. I bet that's really pretty. Now, I have one last thing I've got to do down here, and I just do one swipe like this. Again, that's not a perfect swipe, okay? I know that, but it looks like a hand-painted Christmas tree, which is the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to take here, I'm going to pull this down. Y'all excuse all the shaking here for a minute. I'm going to try to be where y'all can kind of just see it. So you see, I want you to see how my stuff is not perfect, my lines are not perfect, but it looks good, just in the fact that it's a hand-painted piece. And then of course tomorrow, uh, I'm not gonna glitter this for the sneak peek because it doesn't show up good sometimes when we're out there, but I still have to glitter this. And then of course, I think it was Belinda that said, are you gonna show us how to do lights? I still have to do lights, y'all still have to do that and then there's my star right okay well thank you guys for joining me I hope you'll go out and either uh, paint a Christmas tree or cut maybe you're gonna buy a template or maybe you already have your own template maybe you maybe you've got your own Christmas tree at home and you're going to make some Christmas trees and uh, if you want make some money this year hope you guys have a good one and Ashley will be on tomorrow either doing the interchangeable truck or the snail. I can't remember. And she'll be on the painters in the making page. She won't be on the academy. So, anyway, 
Thanks, Linda. Linda says, this is beautiful. I appreciate that. Hey, thank y'all for hanging out with me. I'm already in a better mood. Hee, hee, hee. Y'all have a good one. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.